Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another video. My name is Leopoldo Perella and I do videos about web design, UX and the overall design process. On today's video, let's talk a little bit about presenting your work. And I'm going to take you behind the scenes on how I look for photos on different elements that I'm going to be presenting my work on for my clients. Now, if you're interested in this, stay tuned. So presenting your work is gonna be one of the most important parts of the entire design process. By now, most likely you have already done a strategy call with your clients, you have figured out um, you know, the, the keywords or the words that describe their businesses or their business, you, will, you have already figured out um, what is it that they are looking for, um, you have learned about their business, so you sort of are able to align yourself with them. But now that you have started to put your creative process into paper, into Adobe Illustrator and whatnot, or even as a website um, design, you're now gonna need to present it to them. And presenting to them is, um, is super important because this is going to give them the feeling of how all their market, new marketing material, the logo, their brand, their website will be seen on different elements. Now, there are two things to keep in mind here. One is what elements are you going to be presenting them with and how are you going to be presenting this? So the first thing that you need to ask your clients or you need to find out are the different elements or uh, marketing materials that they're going to be using. So for example, if you are targeting a restaurant, um, you're going to know, you know that they need probably like an apron, they need like a menu, they need um, different banners, posters, social media, uh, post and whatnot. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. Now, let's say you're going for someone who is more in the tech industry, who might not need business cards, who might not need a folder. Um, presenting the, a folder or a business card to them might not be as useful as presenting like a mock-up with a, a desktop template of someone using or seeing their brand on an app or someone seeing their brand on social media or something like that. So when you're doing your strategy call or your strategy session, make sure to ask your clients where are they, where is their brand going to be seen? Are, what are the materials that they are looking to print if they're going to print any? Um, where do their customers interact with the brand? Because this will help you to create proper design mockups that will represent the brand. Then one of the other things that you need to start thinking about is how you're going to present this to them because there are a lot of times, and even when I started to design logos and design websites, I would just send them a PDF with the logo in black and white or the colors, right? But they were never able to create or make a connection of, of, with emotions of, okay, well, this is how when I pick up a piece of paper, it would look like, or when I pick up a business card, it might look like this. So you need to be able to create a story with the way you are presenting your mock up so that it sort of, you know, it's not like, hey, here's your website. But, you know, it slowly gets you there or slowly will get them there. So now that um, we know already how we're going to present this, that we know what are we going to be presenting, we need to go on the computer and start to look for elements that we're going to present with. So there are many websites, like for example, here I have um, elements by Ivanto or Tim Forest, which pretty much gives you like thousands and thousands of mockups that you can use already for a business. Um, all you have to do is go over on Photoshop and you know, like change the layers and whatnot and you have an element ready to present your clients. But there might be the cases where sometimes you may be working on a website or working on a new brand and you can find any of the elements that you need. Maybe it's something very different. Maybe it's like a school where you might have children around uh, using computers or using electronics. And this may not be something that you find in one of these websites, for example. So then what you have to do is so you have to use other websites, for example, like on splash.com that pretty much give you photos of professional photographers that professional photographers have taken. And then you might find something that's a lot more similar or more related to what you're looking for but um, they don't come ready for Photoshop. So what you will have to do then is you need to save your image, take it into Photoshop, and then you start um, editing the layers, adding your 
probably your logos, adding um, the screen so you, someone may be seen and whatnot. So this one is an example of an um, image I took from onsplash.com. And what I'm going to be doing with this image on Photoshop is just getting it ready for a mock-up. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, I want to take a screenshot of the um, image that I want on the desktop. So I'm going to use my personal website as an example. And I'm going to create a screenshot. And then I'm going to go over into Photoshop. And I'm going to create um, a square or a rectangle that will fit the same size of a screen. So there are many other ways to do this, but this is probably the most simple way, simpler way to do it. So once we have this, um, the other thing that we want to make sure that we do is to make everything into a smart object. And if you're not familiar with smart objects, what they allow us to do is to be able to edit these layers outside of the main image so that whatever we change on the layers doesn't affect the way that it looks on the actual file that we're working with. So now that we have created our smart object, we're going to click it and we're going to go to the image that we're working with. And what we're going to do next is to just drag and drop the image. So now that we have the image here, pretty much now we just save it. And now the image will appear on the actual uh, mockup that we're working with. And we're going to click Command T or Control T so that we are able now to transform that image. Then, um, by holding command, we're going to go on the, on the ends or the edges of the image, and we're going to drag that photo to fit the same um, direction or dimensions of the screen that we are working with, so that it looks like it actually belongs on the, um, on the, in this case, on the laptop. But most of the time, that's where a lot of designers finish when they are working on a mock-up for a client. And sometimes when a client sees this, they, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't, they don't feel like it belongs there because nothing else has been edited. And then it sort of looks like a mock-up. And what we want to do is we want to stay away from elements, presenting elements that feel like a mock-up and presenting more elements that actually feel like someone went there and took photos of these elements. And this is where Photoshop really comes into play because what you want to do is that you want to make sure the, um, the screen has the same texture or the same lights or the same feeling as the rest of the image. So what you're going to do now is that um, just take a look at your image, study it, um, look at the different colors. If it is a bit warm, if it is more in the, in the cold side, like blue or yellow. Um, in this case, this image is a bit more in the white and um, cold tone. So my image right now is really yellow, it's really warm. So I need know that I need to make this image um, blend better with the whole background. So we're going to go into curves. And we're going to make it a bit darker. So just play with your curve a little bit so that now the image starts to look a lot better. Um, if you click the new curve uh, layer and you click Alt or Option, it will just edit the layer below it so that everything else looks how it was before. And now you have a mockup that looks a lot more similar to the entire image. So it doesn't look like you just took a file and you dropped it there. Now that you have um, all your mockups ready, you need to be able to present it. And this is the how you're going to present a mockup, right? So as I told you before, you sort of want to build um, sort of like a story. So it's not like, hey, here's your website, or hey, here's your logo, but a little bit start with something small and build it into something bigger, right? So I'm going to share with you a few examples of how we have done this in the past. So this one, for example, is a website for a tire company in Grenada. And as you can see, we pretty much thought about, okay, all the different elements they are going to be using or having to print this logo in. And I know that for, um, they have uniform for the employees. I know that they are going to be using trucks with signage. I know that they have a lot of like billboards and stuff like that around the island. And I know that they have business cards. So as you can see here, pretty much took all that into the content I'm presenting on and I created a style scale with every element that I thought they would need um, to have this logo on. Another option here or another um, project that I did was a 
branding for a restaurant and it's an Italian restaurant. Um, as you can see, it was the same thing. We knew that they might have to like take out, so they needed bags for that. They needed cups for coffee. I know like sometimes when someone went there, they might have a beer. So they needed something to rest the drinks on. I know they needed a sign outside. I know the chef needed to have the logo on um, the shirt or the uniforms which represents the brand. I know they needed menus, right? So. Once you have all those ideas and you create your mock-ups, you need to um, put them on a style scape to be able to present to them. One of the things I will recommend is to create from each of your logos or each of your, um, when you have a logo, create three directions to give your clients um, options to choose from. So if they remove one right away, then you have two options that you can work with to enhance and make it better for them. So that's one really great way to create um, content for, that you're going to be presenting for your clients so you give them a better perspective of how their brand is going to look. And I hope you found this content quite helpful. And make sure to hit the bell button so anytime I post another video like this, you get a notification. Make sure to subscribe and share with others. I will see you again in the next video.